and Health System here at Bridgeport Hospital is pleased to present this informative video to help prepare you for your upcoming joint replacement. My name is Karen Essig. I am a nurse care coordinator at Bridgeport Hospital and I will be instructing you throughout this video. The Bridgeport Hospital, we use a pathway for early recovery after surgery known as ERAS. ERAS focuses on making sure you and your family are active participants in preparing for your surgery and recovery. The ERAS program will help you heal quickly, walk sooner, reduce your hospital stay, minimize your pain, and return you to your normal life sooner. Our program focuses on three single stages of surgery. Before surgery, called the preoperative stage, during surgery, called the intraoperative stage, and after surgery, called postoperative stage, which includes your recovery and post hospital care. Because your surgery is elective, you will have time to prepare for this procedure. Several steps need to be completed before the day of your surgery. You need to be healthy as possible before your surgery so you must see your medical doctor to be cleared for your procedure. If you see any specialists on a regular basis, you may also need for their clearance as well. An example would be your cardiologist. Before your surgery, there are few diagnostic tests that are necessary for medical clearance. You will need to have a chest x-ray, a cardiogram, blood work, and a urinalysis. Your surgeon's office may make an appointment for you to see one of their physical therapists prior to surgery as well. Their goal is to teach you strengthening exercises and proper techniques for moving around. Some examples of these will be reviewed at the end of this video. You will also be given our educational booklet before surgery. Please take the time to read through the information. Before your day of surgery, an appointment will be scheduled for you to visit our one-stop testing area here at the hospital. This is to make sure all your before tests are completed on that day. Here you will also meet the anesthesia team and will have time to discuss any questions or concerns. As your care coordinator, I will be calling you to help arrange your plan of care after your hospital stay. I will verify your address insurance information, and family support. Together, we will go over the necessary equipment and aftercare that will be needed for a safe discharge plan. I will also review any assistive devices you may already have so we can prepare you for your needs. Examples are walkers, crutches, or canes. All patients are encouraged to go directly home after discharge with home services coming to you. I will make sure those arrangements are all set up in advance. I will have the nurse come in to oversee your care and a physical therapist to continue your therapy. Family members are encouraged to be involved with your plan of care, but this may require advanced planning to change their work schedules or their life schedules as well. If you do not have support at home, I will discuss available options for you. I will also make arrangements for your transportation to the nursing home facility as well as coordinate your rehab there if needed. Most insurance plans do not cover the cost of transportation to the rehab center. I will help discuss your options with that. We firmly believe that if you are well prepared, you will experience less stress, improve sooner, and recover with better outcomes. This is the one-stop testing area here at Bridgeport Hospital. An appointment prior to the day of surgery will be made for you by your surgeon's office. Any prior test results should already be here for review. If not, they will be completed at this time. Today, I need my blood drawn and a chest x-ray will be completed. Members of the anesthesia department will also meet with you to discuss the medications and types of anesthesia they will use for you. There will be plenty of time for you and your family to ask questions. On the day of surgery, you will go to the pre-op holding area on the third floor. You and your family member will stay here until it is time to go into the operating room. Here an intravenous line will be started and cardiac monitoring leads will be placed on your chest. This is important to follow your vital signs during surgery. 
Your surgeon will see you here before surgery and review your consent form and mark the correct site and side to be operated on. It is now time for surgery and you will be taken to the operating room. Now your family members may stay and wait in the surgery waiting room here on the third floor or go home and wait for the surgeon to call and share how the procedure went. So this is what the operating room looks like. You will be moved off of this stretcher onto that table and your team of experts will be here to take care of you, which encompasses your surgeon, the physician's assistants, the circulating nurse, the OR technicians, and the anesthesia team, and they all will stay here throughout the whole procedure. After surgery, you will wake up in a hospital bed in the recovery room. You will have special devices on your legs to prevent blood clots. A gentle pressure sensation will come and go as these devices massage your legs. If you are having a knee replacement, you will have booties on your feet. If you are having a hip replacement, you will have sleeve-like pumps over your lower legs. You will be monitored here until the team feels you are stable. And at that time, you will be brought to your room on the orthopedic floor. Hi, my name is Dan and I'm one of the physical therapists here at Bridgeport Hospital. To get your rehab going in the right direction, physical therapy will begin shortly after you arrive in your room. Your physical therapist will perform a brief assessment and then begin helping you learn how to move around with your new knee or hip. Using a walker or crutches, the therapist will assist you getting out of bed and taking a short walk. Your pain should be well controlled and you'll be encouraged to sit up in a chair after working with our therapy staff. If you have crutches or a walker, please have a family member bring them to your room and our staff will be happy to make any adjustments to ensure they are right for you. If you don't have any, no worries. We can order them for you and have it delivered to your room before your discharge. Some equipment may not be covered by insurance and may be purchased in our gift shop located on the first floor. For those having a hip replacement, our hip kit has all the tools you will need to help you maintain your hip precautions following your hip replacement. Very important exercises begin immediately after surgery as well. These exercises are simple and virtually painless, but are very important in your early rehab. The exercises can be found in your education booklet to review before your surgery, but will be provided again by your therapist. Let's take a look at what these exercises look like. Ankle pumps and ankle circles are continuous movements of your feet in either an up and down fashion or circular motion. These are good for many reasons, including the promotion of better circulation of blood in and out of your lower legs. Quad sets and glute sets are isometric exercises that help increase the strength and function of the muscles around the area where the incision was made. To perform a quad set, Tighten your thigh muscle by pressing your knee in a downward motion. Hold the contraction for a count of five without making the common mistake of holding your breath. To perform a glute set, tighten both of the large buttock muscles, hold for a count of five, and then release. This breathing exercise helps you keep your lungs healthy after surgery. A plastic blue spirometer will be provided by your nurse. Place your lips around the mouthpiece and take a full, deep, inward breath. Remove the mouthpiece and hold your breath for a count of five and then slowly exhale. These simple exercises should be performed beginning after your surgery and repeated every half hour. As I mentioned earlier, these exercises and our team's assistance with your early mobilization are both very important for optimal and enhanced recovery after surgery. Following total hip replacement surgery, you will have restrictions on certain activities or positions. These restrictions are better known as total hip precautions and will vary based on your physician's surgical approach. To find out which approach your physician uses, please contact your physician or refer to your education booklet. The purpose of total hip precautions is to avoid positions and activities that may cause a dislocation of your new hip. The precautions generally last for six weeks after surgery and then you can go back to your normal activities. 
No matter which surgical approach was used, the golden or universal rule is, do not cross your legs. This position puts too much stress on your hip joint and also decreases proper circulation in your lower legs. In some cases, a blue foam wedge is used to keep the legs apart. The posterolateral lateral approach is the oldest and still most common approach following hip replacement. In addition to not crossing your legs, you will not be allowed to bend forward at the hip more than 90 degrees. This means that in an upright sitting position, you cannot lean forward or lift your knee towards your chest. Daily activities including dressing, bathing, and reaching for objects off the floor can still be done independently, but will need to be modified or adapted. Our physical and occupational therapists are ready to teach you how. Another precaution is to avoid rotating your hip inward. The resting position of the hip should have the toes pointed upward toward the ceiling and not allowed to rotate inward. When walking, do not pivot on the operated leg. This causes too much rotation of the hip. The anterolateral surgical approach is the newer technique involving a more anterior forward-facing hip incision. In general, this approach is regarded as a more stable technique and has much less risk of dislocation. The precautions for this approach are in fact the opposite of the posterior approach. Patients who have had an anterolateral approach may not extend the hip back past the neutral standing position. In addition, the hip may not be rotated outward and again, no pivoting on the operated leg. We hope you find this information useful as you prepare for your joint replacement surgery. Our rehab team is available and ready to help all of your therapy needs. We hope to see you soon. We hope this educational video helped answer questions and prepare you for your upcoming surgery. Please take time to read and review your educational booklet and materials provided for you detailed information and instructions to follow before your surgery. My name and phone number will be listed. You may call me anytime with any questions. On behalf of the Yale New Haven Health System here at Bridgeport Hospital, we want to thank you for choosing us as your preferred provider.